All right, continuing with uh, Shaul of Tar Tarsus, the Apostle <coughs> Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. If you're not caught up to this point with us, I highly recommend that you get so. Um, read your word. Don't take my word for it. Uh, we do, however, have playlists here on YouTube. So read along in your Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, roughly page 1126 in the scriptures. Indeed, concerning... Indeed, concerning the service to the set-apart ones, <clears throat> it is unnecessary for me to write to you, for I know your eagerness about which I boast of you to the Macedonians, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your ardor has stirred up most of them. But I sent the brothers, lest our boasting on behalf of you should be made empty in this part, in order that, as I said, you were ready. Lest if some of the Macedonians come with me and find you not ready, we, not to speak of you, should be put to shame because of our belief. This is not going to make any sense to you if you haven't read 7 and 8. So I thought it necessary to appeal to the brothers to come to you in advance and arrange your promised blessing beforehand, this to be ready as a blessing and not as greediness. In other words, the Macedonians were just hardcore happy for you, Corinthians, at how much progress you've made. Uh, so when we came to you, if we came with some Macedonians and you hadn't made some progress, I wouldn't want you to be embarrassed or, or to uh, reflect poorly on us, the uh, emissaries, that you weren't as squared away as we said you were. Thus the letter of rebuke we sent you, 1 Corinthians, a year ago. And this, he who sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he who sows on blessings shall also reap on blessings. Let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not of grief or of necessity, for Elohim loves a joyous giver. And Elohim is able to make all favor overflow toward you, that you, always having all you need in every way, have plenty of for every good work. By the way, if you haven't read the autobiography of George Mueller, you should, because uh, it's all about that. And Elohim is able to make all favor overflow toward you, that you, always having all you need in every way, have plenty for every good work. As it has been written, he scattered abroad, he gave to the poor, his righteousness remains forever. Psalms 112. And he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food shall supply and increase the seed you have sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness, being enriched in every way for all simplicity, which works out thanksgiving to Elohim through us. Because the rendering of this service not only supplies the needs of the set-apart ones, but also is overflowing through many thanksgivings to Elohim. Through the proof of this service, they esteem Elohim on the submission of your confession of the good news of Messiah and generosity in sharing with them and all men. And by their prayer for you, who long for you because of the succeeding favor of Elohim in you. Thanks also to Elohim for his unspeakable gift. 10. And I, Shaul, appeal, myself appeal to you through the meekness and gentleness of Messiah I who am indeed lowly when face to face with you, but bold toward you when absent. But I pray that when I am present, I might not be bold with that bravery by which I think to be bold against some who reckon us, reckon us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not fight according to the flesh. For the weapons we fight with are not fleshly, but mighty in Elohim for overthrowing strongholds, overthrowing reasonings, and every high matter that exalts itself against the knowledge of Elohim, taking captive every thought to make it obedient to the Messiah, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is complete. Being ready to punish all disobedience. Uh, there's a footnote here in the scriptures that says, see John 3.36. And so we will see spot run. I mean, see John 3. John 3.36. He who believes in the Son possesses everlasting life, but he who does not obey the Son shall not see life, 
but the wrath of Elohim remains on him. This is Jesus speaking. Okay? I'm sorry. No, this is John the Baptist speaking. He who believes in the Son possesses everlasting life, but he who does not obey the Son, yeah, obey, you must obey Jesus. He who believes in the Son possesses everlasting life, but he who does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of Elohim remains on him. And you should read that whole chapter, because I don't like cherry-picking verses, which is why when we go to John chapter... 15 here a little bit later obey the father and what john chapter 15 i am the true vine and my father is the gardener every branch in me that bears no fruit he takes away so you could be a branch in yeshua a branch in jesus and you're taken away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes so that it bears more fruit sometimes you're going to go through some stuff might have some stuff removed from you so that you can bear more fruit. Not for you, because you are a tool in the toolkit of Elohim, but for Elohim. You are already clean because of the word which I spoke to you. What is that word? Mm. Clean. Cleansed of your sins, set apart. We know from Hebrews, that means you have the Father's laws in your mind and written on your heart. I wonder what that word could have been. Stay in me, and I stay in you. As the branch is unable to bear fruit of itself unless it stays in the vine, so neither you unless you stay in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who stays in me and I in him, he bears much fruit, because without me you are able to do naught. If anyone does not stay in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you stay in me and my words stay in you, you shall ask whatever you wish, and it shall be done for you. We just saw that here in 2 Corinthians 9, right? And Elohim is able to make all favor overflow towards you, that you, always having all you need in every way, have plenty for every good work. If you stay in me, and my words stay in you, you shall ask whatever you wish, and it shall be done for you. In this my Father is esteemed, that you bear much fruit, and you shall be my taught ones. As the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Stay in my love. If you guard my commands, you shall stay in my love. Even as I have guarded my father's commands and stay in his love. What commands are those? Even if I even as I have guarded my father's commands. This is Jesus, Messiah, Yeshua speaking. Oh, he guarded his father's commands? I thought that was all done away with. Uh, it turns out it's not. So getting back to being ready to punish all disobedience. I thought that was all done away with. No, as it turns out, it's not all done away with. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Take a look at what you are facing. If anyone seems to trust in himself that he is of Messiah, let him reckon again for himself that as he is of Messiah, so also are we. For even if I should boast somewhat more about our authority, which the master gave us for building up and not for overthrowing you, I shall not be put to shame, lest I seem to frighten you away by letters. Because they say his letters are truly weighty and strong, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech amounts to nothing. Let such a one take this into account, that what we are in word by letters when absent such are we also indeed when present. For we do not presume to count ourselves or compare ourselves with those who command themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. People who judge their obedience and righteousness by worldly standards 
have no right to make a comparison to those who judge their obedience and righteousness by biblical standards. But we shall not boast beyond measure, but within the measure of the limits Elohim assigned to us to reach even to you. For we are not overextending ourselves as if we did not reach to you, for we also came to you with the good news of Messiah, not boasting beyond measure in the labors of others, but having an expectation that as your belief grows, we shall be greatly enlarged by you according to our limits to bring the good news in parts beyond you, using you as a stepping off point, not to boast in another's limits in what has been accomplished, but he who boasts, let him boast in Yahuwah. For not he who commends himself is approved, but he whom the master commends. Not he who commends himself, but whom the master commends. You know, and in fact, that reminds me of something. Let's flip to Matthew 7, 21 real quick. Not everyone, this is Jesus, this is Yeshua speaking. Not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, shall enter into the reign of the heavens, but he who is doing the desire of my Father in the heavens. What was that thing about quick? And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is complete, says Paul in Corinthians. Here, back to Yeshua and Matthew. Not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, shall enter into the kingdom of heavens, but he who is doing the desire of my Father in the heavens. If you love me, keep my commands as I have kept my Father's commands. Oh, interesting. And many shall say to me in that day, Master, Master, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name? And then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. Get away from me, you lawless people. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them shall be like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we'll do 2 Corinthians 11 as well, since we're here. I wish that you would bear with me in a little folly, but indeed you are bearing with me, for I am jealous for you with a jealousy according to Elohim. For I gave you in marriage to one husband to present to you as innocent as an innocent maiden to Messiah. But I'm afraid, lest, as the serpent deceived Hava, deceived Eve by his trickery, so your minds shall should be corrupted from the simplicity that is Messiah. Now, there's an important point here. The simplicity that is Messiah. What was nailed to the cross? Religion, doctrine, and dogmas of men. That's what Yeshua railed against when he rebuked the Pharisees. You've made my father's law a burden. Come to me, all ye who labor. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. There is a yoke. There is a burden. But it's simple. The Torah is simple. Now, when... Hava, when Eve is deceived, what does she say all the way in Genesis back here? Genesis 2? There she. Genesis 3, 13. And Yahuwah Elohim said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The Nahash, the enemy, deceived me, and I ate. I was fed a lie. And I ate. Yeah, well, the woman, we know throughout the word, is indicative of the church. And the church has been feeding lies and you've been eating. And I was eating. And I'm over it. And you're probably over it, too, if you're here. Or maybe you want to fight with me down in the comments, which is cool. Instead of leaving a snarky comment, what you should do is shoot your own video. And I'll go check that out. And perhaps leave a snarky comment on that because I don't have the time or the patience for yours or anybody else's BS. If you have a biblical rebuke, I may receive that, assuming that it's on solid footing. But 
crap talking, ain't nobody got time for that. So, the woman, the enemy deceived the woman and she ate. The enemy Satan, the woman is the church, and you ate, and I ate, and I'm over it. But I'm afraid lest as the serpent deceived Hava by his trickery, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Messiah. For indeed, if he who is coming proclaims another Yeshua, oh, Jesus, whom we have not proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit, which you have not received, or a different good news, which you have not accepted, you put up with it well enough. This is the religion of men. And the Pharisees specifically, the Pharisaical Yehudim, the Jews of the time, saying that what you're being taught by Shaul and the emissaries is not proper Judaism. You're doing it wrong. No, it's wrong to begin with. Religion, whether it's Christianity or Judaism or anything else, any other entity or ism, is wrong. It's all based upon the doctrines and dogmas, the words and judgments and right rulings of men. And that's what Yeshua railed against. For I reckon that I am not inferior to the most eminent emissaries. But even if I am unskilled in word, yet not in knowledge, but in every way we have been manifested among you in all matters. Or did I commit sin in humbling myself in order to exalt you? Because I brought good news, the good news of Elohim, to you without being paid. Other assemblies I, res I robbed by receiving wages from them to serve you. And when I was present with you and in need, I was not a burden to anyone. For what was lacking to me, the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied. And in every way I kept myself and shall keep from being a burden to you. It is the truth of Messiah in me that this boasting in me shall not be stopped in the districts of Achaia. Why? Is it that I do not love you? Elohim knows. And I shall go on doing as I do in order to cut off the occasion from those desiring an occasion that in that way which they boast they might be found also as we are. For such are false emissaries, deceptive workers, masquerading as emissaries of Messiah. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as a messenger of light. It is not surprising, then, if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Remember in Matthew 4 that the enemy, when he tempts Messiah in the wilderness, is quoting scripture at him. Just because you hear scripture falling out of somebody's mouth doesn't mean they belong to Elohim, doesn't mean they are of God, doesn't mean they know Messiah. And even if they know Messiah, does he know them? Matthew seven twenty one. Just because you claim him doesn't mean he claims you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness, for I never knew you. Verse 16, again, I say, let no one think me to be a fool. And if otherwise, at least receive me as a fool for, for me to also boast a little. For what I speak, I speak not according to the master, but as in foolishness in this boldness of boasting. Since many boast according to the flesh, I too shall boast. For you being wise, put up with fools gladly. For you put up with it if anyone enslaves you, if anyone devours you, if anyone takes from you, if anyone exalts himself, if one hits you in the face. To my shame, I say that we were too weak for that. But in whatever anyone is bold, I say this foolishness. I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they of Israel? So am I. Are they, in need? Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Messiah? I speak as beside myself. I am more in labors, much more in stripes above measure in prisons, more frequently in deaths, many times, five times I received from the Yef the Yehudim, 40 stripes, less one whipped, beaten. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked at night and a day and have been in the deep. In many travels, in dangers of waters, in dangers of robbers, in dangers from my own race, in dangers from the nations, in dangers in the city, in dangers in the desert, in dangers in the sea, in dangers among false brothers, 
in toil and hardship, in watching often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness, besides the matters from outside what comes upon me daily, the anxiety for all the assemblies. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is made to stumble and I do not burn inwardly? If I have to boast, I shall boast of matters that show up my weakness. The Elohim and Father of our Master, Yeshua Messiah, who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. In Damascus, the governor, under Aretas the sovereign, was guarding the city of Damascaim, wishing to seize me, but through a window I was let down in a basket by a wall and escaped from his hands. Oh, there's some other folks telling you something different? Like, I don't know. How about the Hellenization of the way the early Christian sects, the Council of Nicaea, S-E-C-T-S, sectus. The Council of Nicaea, the paganism in Christianity. There's some other folks telling you of a different Yeshua, a different Messiah, a different spirit than the one that Shaul is teaching here before a New Testament even existed. Okay, cool. Yeah, take their word for it. For such are false emissaries, deceptive workers masquerading as emissaries of Messiah. And no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as a messenger of light. It is not surprising then if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Oh, and you don't have to believe me, but if we're just going to compare, you know, tick for tat here. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they of Israel? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Messiah? I am more in labors, much more in stripes above measure in prisons more frequently. And he goes on from there to list his credibility amongst men when it comes to being in service to the father and not some bullshit doctrines of men. So never open your mouth about Paul said as if it somehow detracts from every other word that has been written in this Bible. Because if that's your standpoint, you don't know this word, you don't know Paul, you don't know the Torah, and I would say you don't know Messiah. Bless y'all. Shalom.